Okay, let's start this. Where are Good. So welcome everyone. So today I will present you how to get <laughs> to get of sprockets. So I call this talk goods by sprockets because as you may know since a year Rails approached the JavaScript world and introduced Webpacker, which allows you to, well, to use Webpack in a Rails application. And my presentation will not show you how to start a new Rails application with Webpacker, because you can find hundreds of tutorials for that on the web. What I will focus on today will be how to move, migrate an existing application to, Spro to, to Webpack. <clears throat> so, let's talk about Race Loves JavaScript. You for sure saw that already. They um, wrote this blog post in April last year, so now it's more or less one year that is out. And they wanted to approach the JavaScript world and said, okay, we're not doing it really right. Or if you have a more complex front end application, the tools that we have right now are not sufficient. So they wanted a way to include JavaScript in your race application without using gems, for example, so that you have to include a gem to include some JavaScript that doesn't really sound nice and right. They wanted it to be easy because I mean we are race developers, so <laughs> we are simple minded and if things work good, if they don't work right away we drop them so well this was um this was a target another target target was that it had to be backwards compatible so you could use it together with the existing sprocket so is you have less pain in migrating so what they decided to do is to adopt webpack as i said and they decided to do that by introducing webpacker and this is a race gem and more or less you start your race application you give minus minus webpack and it's set up already with webpack but the problem was that webpacker 2.0 then this requires developer wants so for example i don't know it included a lot of configuration files in your project and yeah I mean, where is the convention over configuration? And <laughs> this doesn't fit Rails. And introduce it the need running a second server to serve your assets. And also, we didn't like that. And well, there was a lot of boilerplate code. And therefore, they noticed it because the reaction of the community was not really <laughs> exciting. And they fixed everything in Webpacker 3. In Webpacker 3, you don't need to run an additional server anymore. I mean, you can if you want, for example, hot reload, hot live reload. They extracted all the configuration files in a PM package, so you don't have them in your repo anymore. So, for me, it's time to move towards Webpacker. So, Let's see a couple of differences. Uh, so both Sprockets and Webpacker are JavaScript compilers, bundlers, so they allow you to take your JavaScript files, combine them all, and uglify or compress them and serve them to the client. So they both offer this feature for JavaScript, for style sheets, for images, all the other assets and both of them support modularity so you can have different modules compile them and include them in different pages but webpacker offers much more because webpack is meant for that it's meant to manage your javascript resources so for example it doesn't pollute your global scope because it includes everything in modules it allows shaking 
it allows you to have hot live reload. So if you change something in your JavaScript, the page is refreshed immediately and the JavaScript updated. And it has a good support from front for front end framework. So if you are planning to use React or Angular or Vue.js, well, you probably need it. Yes, my presentation was good by sprockets. And when I opened the webpacker, I mean, the, on the first lines, you can read, okay, what I just told you, right? So you can manage application like JavaScript. It coexists with the asset pipeline as the primary purpose for webpack is app like JavaScript, not images, CSS, or even JavaScript sprinkles. So we have a problem because we want to get rid of sprockets and we need it to support that. But, however, it is possible to use Webpacker for CSS, images, and fonts. So, well, <laughs> it's not really clear, but you can do it. You can actually do it, and today we will see how. But, yeah, this was my reaction when I read the post, <laughs> the, the readme, because I thought, okay, maybe it's not possible at all. But we will do it. So we will not start with this. We will start from a, an existing Rails application and sort of comments you can use if you want to start a new app with Webpack. Probably you already know it. You can also already skip sprockets. But now we will do some coding. So are there questions until now? Good, very well. So, can you see? Yes. Okay, we will start from this project. This is a very simple Rails application that we have developed at Trinuo. It's a gift coins, it's a system to share and say thank you to your colleagues. So where you basically have your profile, you have your colleagues and you can send them coins and with a message and say thank you. Yeah, that's it. It's very simple. So you can see that there is a very simple interface and some JavaScript, some icons, bootstrap, something very basic. So we will start migrating it. Um, we go to a new branch. Mm hmm. Okay, first thing to do, we need to include the gem packer gem, the web packer. So we take the latest version we said, more or less three, and we want to install. And after that, we can install Webpacker on an existing application using down there. Can you read? Yes. This Webpacker install. So this command will do all the work for us and will configure all the files that we need. I will not go deep in all the files that we have because not the scope of this talk, but you can see. Well, I will show it to you from here. is that it creates a new JavaScript folder inside your application. And inside of it, it has a PEX folder and an application.js. So this file is the new application.js that you had in the assets folder, basically. And well, there is a testing message, console.log, hello world from Webpacker. And once it installed, finishing it finished installing, you see that here it uses to install already some npm packages, some basic things that it needs. Basic, like three pages. <laughs> you can scroll half an hour. So, okay. So as for the old tag, we have a new one. So we included the old module from sprockets like this, with this JavaScript include tag application. 
Well, it's very similar to the new one because it's JavaScript um, back tag. Yes, it's JavaScript back tag. So let's open our console. Let's reload and see our hello world from. Uh, okay. Installed Webpacker, so we have to restart the server. So we have the hello world from Webpacker. So Webpacker now is installed and is able to. So it was easy until now. Now, what you want to do in your application will be to move your old application JS to the new one. So here I start with uh, this application as, for example, jQuery. It uses Turbolinks and Rails and obtru an obtrusive JavaScript, Hopper, Bootstrap, a couple of vendor libraries, and all our custom files. So let's start from our files, because that's the easiest. Let's We can just take all of we have to place them under the new JavaScript folder. So the point is that you cannot put them under packs because otherwise they would be compiled as separate modules by Webpacker. So what you need to do is a new directory here called, for example, sources, and there you can take all your JavaScript files and move them. Now, here we have another issue because I had my files called ECMAScript 6 ES6. That was because we were, yeah, we were using, I don't know, an extension to, to run ECMAScript files. And um, I need to rename them. Luckily, I have it saved. Good. So, next thing is to include them as we did with this require tree. Unluckily, we don't have the same command, my guess, but doesn't matter. We can quickly include all of them. So this time we use import. And they are in the source folder. Good can go back, reload. Okay, no errors. No errors is already pretty good, usually. And, um, for example, one of the JavaScript was to filter these users. So we quickly, yeah, still works. So, moving our resources to Webpack is really easy. You can do it. And it took just a few seconds. And another thing that you noticed is that it keeps working together with sprockets. So we didn't have to get rid of sprockets. You can do this work step by step. You don't have to do everything at once. That's really convenient. So let's take, for example, we had two vendor uh, JavaScripts, which were in the vendor folder inside this form validation. Well, we can place them directly under this SRC. I would make, honestly, a vendor folder for it. You will find everything and all the steps afterwards. I will share them with you. They are written. So we can move those resources also under our new JavaScript. It doesn't change a lot. Vendor files are like just script files as the ones that we had. Our application and include them in the new one. So 
again, we import them. They are in the SRC vendor folder. Good. Ah, um, I will show you something because I got a bit annoyed of reloading all the time this page. So we can try it out since we introduced Webpacker, one of the features, one of the first features that are interesting and which is the hot reloading. So if you are inside your project, you can actually run bin Webpack dev server, which was the one that I was telling you before that was required at the beginning to execute if you wanted to use Webpacker. But now it's not. I mean, you saw it works also without. But if you use it, you can have also you can have also auth reloading. So here, for example, we have hello world from Webpacker, and if I change something here, this compile and it's reloaded automatically. So now. We see that we have an error, and this error is caused by the fact that in our application we have another module, this module. From So this is another vendor library, and we just moved it, so obviously you cannot find it anymore. So if we want to have a second module, what we do is exactly the same as before, exactly what you would have done in the assets folder with sprockets, you use JavaScript pack tag instead of um, instead of asset tag. You go in packs where there are your modules, you make a new folder, call it form validation, and that's the file that we need. So you can move it there. Every time you generate a new module, so you add a new file in the packs folder, you need to restart the um, webpack dev server if you are running it. Another time when another case when you have to rerun it is when you change the environment configurations, but you will see that afterwards. So, okay, well, it reloaded already and we have not the error anymore. Okay, let's move forward with some other interesting Things S and Turbo Links. Those two are very easy. You can just get rid of them and install the npm the npm packages. So yes, those two. It makes also more sense if you think about it to have the JavaScript libraries in npm packages. So I just installed the two libraries and you need some code. To run them, I saved it so it's a bit easier. So we go in our yes, we include them and we start. Them. That's basically it. So we imported them and we started them. And did I remove them from here? Yes. So, yes. Still no error, and it made the hot reloading, so it should be still working. Yes, you see the bar up there loading, so it means that Turbolinks is in place. So, yes still calls are executed from Turbolink. So also moving those things is very, very easy. No effort needed. So let's go with the maybe a bit more complicated one. There is jQuery. To move jQuery, you have to install it as a plugin. So it's slightly different. You cannot just import it. So we get rid of jQuery from our old sprites and we add it through yarn as an npm package and then to include it you need this small piece of code I will explain it to you in a second and we can check another thing that webpacker installed 
during the installation and this year so we have under the config folder we have a new webpack folder with three files that you may recognize because they are exactly the equivalent of um, the environments file that we have so for race we have development production test and environment.rb and we have the same for our javascript files so we have development production test and environment so what we need to do is to include jQuery as a plugin like this oh you cannot see it really well huh well doesn't matter now since we changed one of the environment files we need to restart it it's like with Rails, when you change something in the environment files, you restart. Okay, we included jQuery in our webpack and it complains that jQuery is not found for the old assets that we are using with sprockets because, as we said before, webpack doesn't pollute the global scope, so it includes jQuery in a closed environment just for your modules. And therefore, Bootstrap, which was depending on jQuery here, cannot find it anymore. So we have to move also Bootstrap, basically. So we take the chance and we yarn add Bootstrap, which version 4 is out after, I don't know, one year, two years. Three years, thirty years. <laughs> it took forever, but it's out. So we added Bootstrap four and Popper, which is required by Bootstrap, and we have just to include Bootstrap as well in our application. Now we can put it here together with the other imports. Yeah, let's see if it works right away. It's reloading something. Slower than expected. But I can guarantee you it's not the fault of Webpacker. <laughs> Okay, doesn't complain, there are no errors, and if we try some bootstrap features, JavaScript features like the drop downs here, you can see that it still works. Nice, so we moved also bootstrap, so you saw different things, you saw how to move libraries, you saw how to move vendor files, you saw how to move your JavaScript files, that's basically it. So if we go back to our old application, we don't have anything anymore. So, well, it's just time to get rid of it. We can get rid of it. We can open our layout. We can remove it. No, wrong one. <laughs> can remove it. We can also remove some gems now because we don't need all of them. So, for example, we could remove well, Bootstrap we still need because we still have the CSS files. So we could remove jQuery Rails, we could remove jQuery Turbo Links, which we wouldn't have needed anyway. We could remove Uglyfier, which is needed to compress your JavaScript files. And we had also this to support ECMAScript 6. Just get rid of everything. And eventually remember also to disable the JS compressor in the production RB file. You don't need it anymore. And keep turbo links, yes, if you want, yes. Ah, no, here, you mean. Yes, yes because there are the helpers for the backend. So, yes, keep it. Yes, there is this cons that, I mean, they are not there yet. I always forget this, I have to remove this. Um, they are not there completely yet, so they still support sprockets and they also support Webpacker. So, I mean, you can include the NPM package, but if you have the Jam Turbo links, 
it will still include also the JavaScript uh, files that you need. They are there. So let's see, because when preparing this presentation, there were things failing all the time. I think I am a bit long with the time, but just because the server is low, even if it's my machine, I don't know why. <laughs> so, okay, we got rid of our JavaScript files. That's, that's something, and it didn't take a long time. So, but what I would like to do now is to check an, one of the two things we can do with Webpacker. So, for example, is an analysis of our package. So, we could add this yarn package is called webpack bundle analyzer and we add it only in our development environment so we don't add it to production and we have to configure it like this this would be my suggestion then do whatever you want um, more or less i am simply requiring the plugin and setting it up with this option I change it an environment file. This means stop and restart. Now, when I will restart this time, this plugin will generate a report of how my packages are built. So I have two modules, our application and the form validation EN. So I created two packages, two modules before. And this is how they are built. So you see that there is a lot of stuff here. Don't get scared as I did on the first time because I saw, together with Stefan, that actually those are just libraries introduced for the hot reload. So if you just reload without the uh, web dev server running, now Rails will, <laughs> in a second, understand that that is not running anymore and it has to compile the resources by itself. Usually this, the first time, takes a bit longer. There is also something weird because it takes 300 milliseconds to perform a select on the database, which is not normal. So this will also recompile, you see, in the log you see it here. Okay, these are our two packages and you see that there is a bit of difference. There are not all the stuff that was in there before and they are in total one megabyte, 16. But you may know something which is a bit nasty. We have J twice. So, well, they are... We have two packages in the same page and they include both jQuery. So, that's not really nice for us. And we have two get rid of this. So what we can do is to use external as a feature from Webpack, more or less you can say a hey, jQuery is already provided, so don't include it. So what we are going to do now is to include jQuery directly in our application through a CDN, for example. So include it through uh, via CDN and Let's change the configuration of our environment instead of requiring it from here. Just configure the external and say jQuery provided. Don't care about it because otherwise it would give you errors in com at compile time. So we can also get rid of jQuery. We didn't check our package file which may be interesting. So this is our package JSON. I mean, if you are, if you are used to front-end applications, you know what we are talking about. For the others, mainly it's our, it's our gem file, the equivalent of our gem file for, for our JavaScript dependencies. So, um, yes, I will simply reload it because we don't have the server to restart. Let's hope that is a bit faster. So it's compiling again. And 
Okay, now they are much smaller. You see that application is much bigger, but the other one is actually much smaller. And we have 600 kilobytes in total. Well, obviously, jQuery is loaded from somewhere else, so it's not included here, but we reduce the size anyway. Okay, so I would say that with this we are pretty happy. <coughs> Go back to the presentation and let's see. So, what did we do until now? What did I show you? Just a recap. We moved all our JavaScript files. Didn't take long, at least now it took me a bit longer <laughs> before. We created two different modules, so you saw how to create different modules and how still you can split your JavaScript resources if you need to do so. And you saw that the hot reloading really works, so you can use it in a race application. You saw also how to analyze your bundles and how to, I don't know, compress them or optimize them, maybe by extracting some resources or, well, then you need to know also Webpack a little bit more. There are thousands of things to know about Webpack. And yes, we, don't, we are not using sprockets for JS anymore. But we still have Java style sheets and images. So, yes, again, we have some work more to do. I think I still have some minutes, do I? Yes, good. I will be slightly faster. <coughs> I will try to. So, moving style sheets is pretty easy as well, but they don't expect you to do that. So, well, not yet. I personally think they will <laughs> sooner or later, but at the moment they don't. So, to move our uh, style sheets, it's the exactly the same thing. You need a module. You need a module for our style sheets. Let's call it, so we copied this one. This was our style sheet link tag from before. Tell me if you don't see, huh? That I zoom in a little bit. So, we actually include a style sheet pack tag. We cannot call it application because there is already another module called application. It's the JavaScript one, so we have to give it a different name. Let's call it style sheets. So we have to go in the packs and we make a new file style sheets.css. Like okay, now this looks really ugly because we have style sheets in style inside the JavaScript folder. So, well, give me, I will take a few seconds to rename this, if I remember how to rename a folder. Ah, ah, you are paying attention. <laughs> Let's call it Webpack. So, and we have to change also the name of this folder in <coughs> the Webpacker configuration. So there is a file. Can do it. There are some basic configurations that they left inside your application with things that you may want to change, like this shitty name folder, folder name. Okay. So now it feels slightly better. <laughs> we don't have style sheets inside uh, an application folder. Now we have to start moving our uh, style sheets here. So inside the sources, I would suggest to split it. We have a JavaScript folder like we had before in the assets. So just move everything there. This for sure will take a little bit of time to Ruby mine. It, it, it needs its time. So, and um, we are going to create also where we will put our resources. Okay, it took some time, but at least it updated the references. Okay, so we are ready. Um, we can go in the assets, style sheets, and let's look what we have here. So we have some libraries included from a gem. Um, we have again our uh, CSS files, and we have something from the vendor folder. So let's start from the last one first, because it's the easiest. So take this stylesheet file and let's 
move it to the right one. Keyboard, help me. Good. So, our folder is ready. Vendor, style sheets, form validation. Let's move it there. Good. So, now this one is importing our style sheets directly from there. It's time to check if it's really working, I would say. We may also start a dev server to have hot reloading. Okay, it's still building the report. Let's get rid of it, because otherwise it's annoying. I changed an environment file, so restart. Okay, let's close some windows. Okay, no errors. That's good to see if it's still working. Actually, it could go here. Open the header. We could go and see that our style sheets are actually here. And if we look into them, it included everything. Okay, that's nice, and it's working. So we can move on. It was not as difficult as you may read in some blog posts around. Eh? So, let's take Font Awesome. Font Awesome comes from a gem. So let's get rid of it from here. Let's get rid of it from the gem, because, I mean, we simply don't need it there. Don't know unless you use some helpers, but Fontosum is provided as a npm package. Uh, not npm. <laughs> so we install it as the others, and we include it. We include it with this. So there is the import standard of Fontosum. And you have also to specify this for the fonts, otherwise it cannot find the fonts and it messes up things a little bit. So we can go back and check if our icons are still there. Is it reloading still? I don't know what happened with the database, but yeah, it takes like 10 times to execute a query. Hmm, fast. Okay, the icons are here. If it reloaded. <laughs> so also moving font awesome was not that difficult. I would say pretty easy. The last thing we have to do is to move all our style sheets files. So we have bootstrap and we have some customization of bootstrap. So we need we are gonna need the SCSS version of bootstrap. And also all the other files depend on bootstrap and bootstrap variables. Therefore, um, we need to move all of them at the same time. So, I'm just going to do it. We can take all our style sheets from the shared folder, home, login, transactions, not welcome. Welcome is another module. We introduce it only in the welcome page. So you can take everything and go to the style sheet. Good. Then you can take all your old call from your old application CSS and move them in the new one. Change slightly. Uh, no, this one. Change slightly the path. Yes. And to import Bootstrap, actually, we need to import it from Bootstrap, CSS, Bootstrap. The rest doesn't change. It still looks good. It still looks good. It's loading fast. Validation is working. JavaScript is working. Yeah. We moved also the style sheets. So, well, let's go back and do the... Ah, okay, we still have the welcome module. This was another module, but easy. 
just move it to packs. Move your module to packs. So welcome as CSS. It includes already some stuff. Um, go to the welcome page where you include this one. Um, it's called welcome here. This layout is not a style sheet link, that, but pack tag. So let's go and check. We open in Incognito so we are not logged in. Ah, right. New module. Restart. So you will never do it right. I tried this three times. Ah. Fail to compile. Yes, maybe. Let's go and check. So, yes. Good. Bootstrap. Good. Compiled successfully. Uh -huh. Ah, it works. <laughs> okay, so we moved on the style sheets. Let's get rid of also this folder. Oh, this feels good. Can get rid of it, and we can get rid of Bootstrap as a gem. We can get rid of what can we get rid of? Sass Rails. And, well, actually, that's it. <laughs> but, um,. <coughs> Yeah, we moved also the style sheets. So the last thing we have to move, I will show you quickly, because I don't have more time, are, I will just say it quickly, so I don't have to show you anyway, but are the images. So for the images, is basically the same. Now you will see that they are not working, but basically you just create an images folder under your packs. You create a pack just for the images, and that's it. Then you have to use not asset path, asset path, but asset pack path. It sucks the name. Yeah, it sucks. But yes, that's it. So yeah, no, I spoiled it. But <laughs> now the question could be: Should I use pockets or webpack? And the answer is yes. So, <laughs> I mean, decide, decide yourself. I mean, this makes sense in the moment that you may want to use more complicated or front-end features. So if you want to start using React, you can move stuff. But you also saw that it's not really complicated to start with it right from the beginning. The hot, rely, uh, hot reloading can help you, even if you have just few JavaScript. And it can help you to keep your global namespace clean so yes maybe i wouldn't use it for very simple things or if you don't need any javascript but otherwise yes i would try it try it and start moving things there because it's easy you can do it and you don't have to do it just in one step so thank you that was it <laughs> do you have questions It runs with the assets precompile. So assets when you run assets precompile, it already precompiles the webpacker thing. So you don't need to do anything there. Uh, given that we have action cape, just like yes, there is an npm package also for action cable. So. Yes, maybe the default example that Rails provides you, I think it pollutes or uses the global namespace, so you may have to change something there. But yes, there is an npm package. And yes. First of all, thanks for the great talk. Doing Rails in a while and a lot. Uh, but I have an You're interesting welcome. question. Do we have actual hot reloading? What I saw is page 
Mm -hmm. So do we have real hot reloading, like say closure and where you actually hot reload your asset and you don't have a complete page reload? Users. We could see it. Wait for all the stuff to have we could check it. We could check it quickly. Because I don't know your, the answer to your question. <laughs> so we could check the network and check the requests and let's perform change uh, so looks like a page reload to me yeah it's a full page reload Other questions? Good, then I already took too much time, probably. <laughs> so, yes, to the next talk. I don't know who is it. Yes, thank you very much, Alessandro. You are welcome.